a couple of weeks ago, we had a representative from Duke Energy in our office discussing shoreline management. He touched on a lot of really important subjects that I think that realtors in our area, specifically the Lake Norman area, should know about. Full version of that class in a video on our YouTube page, Real Estate by Social, but just compile a shorter video that touches on some of the really important key points that he made during that class. Here it is, and I hope you enjoy. 2006, North Carolina Wildlife really wanted us to pay closer attention to permitting what I call a vertical seawall. A lot of people were permitting them out here just for looks. They really add no fish habitat at all. So be sure the homeowner has an erosion problem before you permit a hard wall. In other words, you need to have a three foot bank for us to permit a hard wall. Two foot to get riprap. If you've got less than two feet, you can do enhanced riprap, which is big boulders with plantings mixed in with the rock. If you've got riprap on your shoreline now, that's all you're going to get. Don't come back asking to put a wall because the Corps of Engineers says you don't have an erosion problem. We'll let you add some new rock to it, make it look nice, but we're not going to let you remove that rock and put a wall in there. That's going to create more erosion and create turbidity. So if you've got riprap now, you can maintain it, but we're not going to let you come back and add a wall. There is no rule that says you have to transfer this dock in this homeowner's name. I mean, we're not, we don't arrest people, we don't shoot people. We're just telling you that if you want a copy of the existing permit, it has to be in that homeowner's name. Okay? If you, some people says, I don't need a copy. The dock's in good standing. Well, if you think the dock's in good standing, fine, go ahead. I'm not here to hold up a closing. I'm here to help you educate your buyer or your seller and keep you out of trouble if all possible. That's the reason I'm saying the first thing you need to do if you get that lesson or if you've got a buyer who's looking for a home and he wants waterfront, if he's interested, call that listing agent. If that listing agent had done their job, they would have a copy of the peer permit. What if the, you can't find the owner that the permit, they're deceased. The lot sold 30 years ago and it was never transferred into right. the we're, third. We're going to transfer it in that current owner's name. We're going to get him a copy of the permit. <clears throat> so you don't need permission? No. What if they're planning on just tearing down a dock and building a new Good question. Hey, if your buyer says, hey, I'm going to tear this thing out of here anyway, when they do a permit or a dock, it's going to get put in their name. You're right. That's a good, good point. As long as they're comfortable that the dock that's there can stay there. Uh, there's no projected lot line issues. There's no third of the cove issues. If you're on open water, the furthest you can put a dock out is 120 feet from the shoreline. You can't park a boat within 10 feet of the projected lot line. You can't go out. If you, if you do a U-shaped slip where you can park a boat on the outside finger, a lot of people turn them sideways, that boat now can't be over a third. So really, if I go measure and I see you're going to build a dock where you can park a boat on the outside, I'm going to give you a third to minus 10 feet. You're saying that if the, let's say the current owner goes to, wants to sell it, and the buyer says, I'm not buying it unless I can get... Unless I can see a pure permit, that thing's been permitted and everything. Yeah. Right, so, so there's a permit, but... Um, because there's a tag, and you say, yeah, there's a permit, but it's in like the third, the prior, uh, some prior owner. Yeah, 10, 10 owners ago, it's in their name. Right, so now the current, the, the buyer is saying, okay, well, but is it compliant? That's right, that's the reason that current owner needs to transfer it. To himself. So he can get a copy of the permit. Right, so you can yeah. see if it's in compliance. So you can see if it's in compliance. Okay, so, but then you can't transfer it to the buyer yeah. until... Until they close. Until they close, so it's got to get transferred twice. Yeah. Well, if they want to, that's right. Yeah. 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 All right. We have what we call shoreline management plan, a shoreline management plan, and we have shoreline maps. We have the whole lake classified into a category. It's like a zoning map. You call me and say, hey, Dennis, I got this lot over on uh, Bethelwood. I want to put a dock here. I'm going to go look at the classification. The classification is residential. Hey, that looks good. But there's a lot of classifications out there that won't allow that private dock. For a townhome, it's going to have to be commercial. We consider that commercial. Any lot so divided and recorded after September 1st, 2006 has to have 100 feet of shoreline. 100 feet of usable shoreline. We have shoreline out there classified as environmental. That's not usable. 